Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Uh, my name is Prashant Dhange. Uh, I'm a RADOS engineer at uh, IBM Canada. Uh, today, I'm going to talk about uh, safe troubleshooting in a containerized environment. So let's start. So I'm going to talk about like diagnosing problems in a safe environment and how to troubleshoot them. Uh, next up is like uh, log collection, where to look for the logs and uh, uh, how to increase the uh, debug levels uh, for the demons and uh, and analyzing the. Okay, yeah. thank you. And uh, understanding those logs, how to analyze them. Uh, next one is like troubleshooting safe OSD demons as well and uh, MGR safe manager. And next topic is like memory leak issues, like how to troubleshoot them and how to uh, kind of like what data we needed to uh, analyze the memory leak issues as well as how to troubleshoot them. And the last one is like uh, how to troubleshoot the crashing or other sec folding uh, safe demons. So the first is like diagnosing problems. So you usually see like uh, in the, uh, if you want to, if you are seeing some problems in the safe cluster, you usually starts with the safe status and see how the cluster is doing. So whether uh, you are seeing some uh, issues with the safe status, like health one or health error. Uh, so that indicates like you are having some problems in the safe environment. So you start looking for the kind of like logs or some other additional information to find out where the real problem is. So logs is really helpful in that perspective. So you first, uh, so in the safe containerized environment, all the log goes to the general D and uh, where you can find all the logs for the demons. Like if you talk about the cluster logs, they need to find it in the safe monitor uh, demon uh, general D, you can say. So you can uh, get those from using the safe, uh, uh, sorry, uh, general CTL command, general CTL hyphen U and the daemon name you can say. Uh, if you want to have the dedicated or rather like uh, the uh, logs in the specific file, just like what you used to have it in the bare metal environment, you can use a log, log to file config variable to set it for the specific safe daemon. Then you'll get the logs in a specific log file. Um, so timestamp. So timestamp is really important, like when you are talking about the problems, right? So you are seeing some problems, but you don't know what really happening. So and you want to track it down to what really happened before the cluster seeing the problem. So you need to find the timestamp when the things started going uh, left and uh, kind of like way. So you need to go back to the previous events if something has happened, like some OSTs are going down, or some being marked down, or some OSDs are crashing, or some other issues, like you have done some changes in the environment, like a network changes or some other changes in the environment. Um, so the MONs, MONs are really important, like uh, when you're actually trying to access the cluster. So if MONs are not doing good, or rather like they are not in a quorum, then you'll find the client hung or other like I hung issues. So in that, uh, in that case, you might need to find some, uh, like whether the it's really the mon quorum issue or some other issues like networking or some other configuration changes like uh, configuration uh, uh, like uh, you have provided the, uh, deployed the wrong uh, safe config on the client node where you have the wrong mon IP addresses, you can say. Uh, if you really want to track it down to the uh, safe monitor, uh, so mons are not in quorum, then you need to enable the debugging for the, all the monitors and then track it on why they are actually not able to select the lead monitor. Um, so slow ops, like you often see the slow ops in the cluster. So that's usually because of the uh, kind of like, you have rather like, uh, what are you gonna say? Uh, one of the OSTs rather like slow or if it's affecting the multiple OSTs, uh, you see it in the safe status. You'll see like, okay, this X number of OSTs are having a slow request and implicated OST numbers, you can say. So if, if there is like just small set of OSDs, then you can track it down to that specific OSDs and then enable the debugging and find it out whether the disk is slow uh, or rather like some networking changes in that OST node or some other issues like uh, the firmware issues like 
and if you are affecting if it, it has affecting multiple OSCs, then you need to look in the broader like if there is a network changes or something or some environmental changes uh, if you are done recent like uh, upgrades and that might have some bugs in the safe code that might be affecting this slow request uh, similarly like uh, as I talk like the network stability important like if, if network is not stable then you'll see a hell lot of log uh, issues in the safe cluster uh, the firewall and IP table rules are also kind of like you you have configured it but sometimes what happens you reboot the nodes and you find it like okay after reboot then this specific set of OSDs and that OSD node is not able to communicate with the other OSDs so likely on the restart, uh, the IP table tools had changed or some settings had changed. So you need to look around that area. Uh, resource limitation. So in the containers environment, uh, the, each safe demand containers doesn't have any limits uh, as com uh, uh, if you talk about like memory or CPU. So some customer configure the safe containers to have the uh, limited memory or CPU. So if that is actually affecting your performance or uh, that's affecting the overall uh, safe uh, working situation, then you need to look for around that area, like whether the OSDs or other safe demons are encountering any resource limitations. So you usually see the safe uh, demon crashes as well, whether it's OSD, MON, or any other demons. So you look for the, uh, the uh, safe status and look for some uh, like pointers like whether the safe status you are seeing any uh, demons are recently crashed. That's likely the uh, crash model has collected the uh, uh, crash information. Sometimes you don't see it uh, just like in the uh, rook environment. It's because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's something to do with the, with the kind of the code amp, like it's not getting generated on the, on the environment. Um, the memory leak issues, so it's not often like you'll have the memory leak issues. Uh, there could be reason, different reason for that as well. You might be like uh, tune the cluster in a way that it's actually, uh, you are disabled the OST memory target, just like, uh, what do you call? Um, uh, it's auto-tune, like blue star auto-tune flag you are set to false, then you are actually eventually disabling the OST memory target. So it, the OST is not rather like sticking to the memory target set, so it, it overshoots. So, and it also like in case of there is a recovery or scrubbing is happening, that might also, uh, in that case also the, uh, the oral uh, demand, uh, OST, OST demand uh, memory grows. The performance issues, uh, it can be environmental, like network or the disk or any uh, the kernel bugs, I would say. Uh, but overall, like, if you say, like, you have benchmarked the cluster and it's often, like, giving some bad performance later on, then it could be environmental. But if you are expecting, like, some latencies, uh, uh, just like ATCD, uh, like less than five milliseconds, and your, all the OSTs are backed by STD, then you can't get that much rather like latency in the, uh, from, the, from the safe pools. So inconsistence, you often see like some PG starts are inconsistent, like number of bytes, or even like in case of like safe uh, raw usage. So raw usage is like, uh, you, are not, you are seeing the, the total usage for the cluster is some of, I assume like your five, five petabytes. Uh, but uh, overall the OST, uh, used bytes is kind of like uh, six, uh, 5.5. So yeah, there is a five, 500 TB of shortage. So it's likely because the OST or other like blue story is not really in, in the space from the uh, disk, you can say. We can discuss that one like a later uh, part of the slides. So this is one of the issue you often see in the OpenStack environment as well, and even the in the, star, in the bare metal uh, environment as well, where you are you're using it for the different uh, applications. So here, if you see like, uh, this is public network and cluster network are defined for the MON, uh, but the RADOS command is actually not, or rather like uh, the safe cl uh, clients are not able to communicate with the cluster. So safe cluster health is okay, everything is looking good, and you, you are not seeing any problem in the network as well. But here the problem is like some of the OSTs are actually uh, having their front addresses on the client network 
where they are supposed to have it on the public network. It's because of the race condition with the container and the networking uh, system, uh, like uh, system the network manager. So it's sometimes it usually takes like a couple of hours to find out, okay, what's really go going wrong. So here you can easily uh, use some uh, like some commands, safe commands like uh, RADOS or RBD commands and just run it in a debug MS mode, uh, uh, like enable the debug MS logs and see where, which kind of like where the, whether all the OSTs are responding or other ways to just take the OST dump and see whether the, all the OSTs are having the front addresses on the public <coughs> network. So in this particular case, if you see like the OST2, it's, it's actually was not responding to the, uh, this particular like OST op. So the OST2 is actually listening on the, uh, on the cluster network IP address instead of the public. So this is kind of like generic. So uh, this is known problem at the moment. So to kind of like to avoid this issue, I always define the public network for the OSTs. So that way actually uh, if the OST, uh, when it starts, it makes sure the OST is binding on the IP address from the public network only. So the, the perf data, so this one is useful when you're actually trying to investigate the high CPU consumption uh, issues uh, for the OS safety months. Uh, so you collect the perf, uh, perf data, uh, perf record, and then using the perf report, you can see this kind of like call stacks. So which usually tells you like where the most of the time is being spent in which call. So this one is kind of like, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's spending most of the time in the while uh, adding the key value pair to the RocksDB. So this is a, a kind of like a, a normal like a system D service file and the unit.run file in the containers environment. Uh, so the first one is like, uh, so earlier you used to have in the, in the before Nautilus or rather like in the Nautilus, you have the pod run command in the service file only but now we moved everything to the unit.file for the uh, individual uh, OST. Uh, th so the first command in the unit.run, not sure whether you are able to view it properly. Uh, so this one, okay. this one is just to activate the OST and the below one is actually uh, running the actual safe daemon or safe uh, daemons you can say, with a safe mon or MGR. This is a PS3, you can say, it, or the process tree for the safe demons in the containers environment, where you have this conman, uh, the container manage, uh, monitor and management tool, which actually creates this uh, the container process and the pod man or, uh, uh, used by the like it uses the run C kind of to create the container process, and then the the pod man in it or other like pod man then starts this OST demon under it. So, so sometimes you often need to uh, change the, some add some like, assume like your case, like the OST is not able to uh, uh, kind of like communicate with the uh, monitor and it's not, you want to debug it and see what's really happening. Uh, you might need to use a save.com or you need to run like add uh, additional debug variables in the save command uh, in the unit.run and you can start uh, rather like uh, uh, this save uh, demand in a more debug uh, level, uh, like higher debug level. So Safe EDM, so how many of you are using Safe EDM or other like uh, Safe Ansible to manage the cluster? And how many are like using the Rook Safe, uh, the OpenShift? Okay, yeah, thanks. So earlier, if you remember like uh, if before the Safe EDM, so we usually have to follow these steps to mount the blue store to have the access to the actual uh, disk, you can say. It to get the blue FS or other like uh, investigate the blue store, you can say, it. if you want to get something from the blue store. Uh, so the, these steps are being awarded now with the safe EDM. You just need to run the safe EDM shell and then uh, name of the daemon to get the access to the blue store device or disk, you can say. It. We can easily like use it for the exporting the blue FS or accessing like if you want to just view the blue store content. 
so this is safe like uh, for the exporting the blue fs uh, in case if you want to investigate the uh, uh, spillover blue fs fluor uh, spillover uh, bug or some other like corruptions rocks to be corruptions as well uh similarly if often like uh, in the before blue store like if you have used a file store as well right you often see the uh, the pg directories on the on the file store but uh, you can also use the this fuse mount uh, for the blue store to have the access to the the pg directories and see where, where the actual uh, objects are getting stored and how is uh, kind of like the directory structure inside the blue store as well so this is just for the information uh, uh, perspective uh, we never use to mount this fuse mount you never rather like you don't need to do that actually just kind of like if you want to see like how the things inside the blue store similarly like like exporting pg like uh, you often see like um, uh, there's some uh, situation where the ost is rather like is uh, is is crashing after connecting to the mon but the blue store itself is uh, kind of like consistent it's not showing any corruptions and you need to export the pg from the that particular ost because some uh, pgs are down or uh, incomplete and you want to repair uh, uh, kind of like repair that pg or uh, rather like recreate that pg uh, you can export that pg and uh, import it to the acting set of that pg inside uh, to the other osts so as i discussed earlier as well like the core dump is really crucial like uh, if you want to investigate some memory leak issues or some uh, safe code bugs you can say it. or even case of like uh, if something is uh, what do you can say uh, due to some corruption blue store corruption as well uh, and in some cases as well like uh, if you want to dump the in memory logs as well uh, so code dump is really uh, important here to investigate or rather see the problem uh, uh, you sometimes see that like, uh, the code dump is not getting generated so that's because of like you have the the default core uh, core file limit is uh, is not set properly or rather like it's default to the soft limit is zero so that's meant like it's uh, it's it uh, the system doesn't like system the core dump service is not able to dump the core dump file or rather create the core dump file in that case you need to uh, uh, use this uh, uh, like uh, define this uh, default uh, limit core to infinity like setting the soft and hard limit for the hard, hard limit for this uh, limit co uh, limit core file uh, in the system d dot conf and uh, just restart the system d or restart the node so as i said earlier like uh, the, all the daemon logs goes to the general d and uh, if you want to uh, get hold of the, in, uh, the specific daemon logs then you need to the general ctl command and you often get the source report sometimes uh, and all the logs are inside the same general uh, general d archive file so you have to use the general ctl hyphen hyphen file and the archive file path and use the service name uh, in the hyphen u option to get the specific daemon logs uh, if you are uncomfortable with the general d and just uh, in kind of like uh, you are not able to trace out the logs through the uh, general d you can often go back to the the old way of like dumping the uh, the daemon logs in the specific file so you can just set the global log to file to true and if you want to have the cluster logs as well in a specific file as well then just set the mon cluster log to uh, uh, mon cluster log to file to true uh, and as well as you you can disable the uh, logging for generally using this these four uh, config parameters um, yeah if you want to set it to the so the monitor config database has really made it easy to easily apply the configuration throughout the cluster so with a just single command earlier you has to do it ctl command to do it like for the specific demons uh, like monitor or the osts 
but with the monitor config database, you can easily apply it to the uh, all the set of the OEC types you can say, uh, sorry, uh, the safe type, safe daemon types. So, but sometimes uh, this config, uh, rather like if, if the daemons are not able to communicate or rather like having problem with the, uh, communicate with the mods, then this uh, like safe config command will not be helpful. So you have to do it through the safe.conf or through the safe, uh, admin socket commands as well. Not admin socket, yeah. So you can rather like debug it through the uh, the boot up process or the OST or other safe mod boot up process as well, like see where the things are going wrong with that one. So as the safe logs are also important, equally the system D or uh, sorry, uh, uh, D, D message or the kernel logs are also important. So sometimes like, Everything is looking good from the safe uh, safe logs perspective, but you know never know like what really happened uh, on the system when the things are not going uh, in the right direction for the safe node. You can say so that particular nodes uh, D message or the kernel logs can give you more details. Like was was there a, a kind of like a, the task hung issue or some other issues? You can say. So this is the different issues kind of like for the safe uh, object storage daemon. Uh, you often see like uh, the flapping OSTs, which could be because of um, uh, some unknown bus like the uh, blue store corruption or uh, because of like uh, OEM killer event, like some specific and like uh, uh, when the cluster is under recovery or scrubbing activity is going on or some other issues as well. So in that case, uh, you need to track it down through the cluster logs, what's really happening, and see the events like uh, whether it's because of like the OST is being marked down uh, wrongly, whether it's because of like the, the multiple reporters uh, the OS, uh, from the peer OSTs, and if it's just specific to the OST nodes, then you can find it, okay, this specific OST node is having problem, but it is throughout the cluster, then it might be related to some environmental issues. Um, so in the flapping OST case as well, if it's a crash, then you'll have the core dump and uh, even the crash uh, module captures the crash info as well. So what really happened when the daemon crashed, you can say. Uh, so this blue store, uh, the next is the blue store not freeing up the display. So this is sometimes uh, it's uh, because of the really the blue store bug, uh, or something to do with the discard, like discard, discard functionality. So the STDs uh, don't support the discard functionality. Uh, so, and there is a, a case of like, uh, you have said the uh, blue store B dev uh, discard flag to false, you can say it. So in that scenario as well, like you'll see the case, like uh, you have the, in the root safe environment, uh, if the disk is backed by the, the uh, what you the v, uh, VMware VMDG file, and even after deleting the pools, right, uh, data uh, like de uh, deleting the data from the pools, you'll still seeing the some data is kind of like the blue store is not really in the space, so it could be related to the blue uh, the discard functionality. Uh, we sometimes see the these corruptions as well, the blue store corruptions or uh, RocksDB or the even the super block or the label block as well on the blue store. So in that case, like it's, if we talk about the RocksDB, the corruption happens, might happen during the compaction, RocksDB compaction. And if you talk about the blue store, it could be, uh, it's, it's during the kind of like, it's, if you talk about like uh, uh, because of the exponential growth of the blue FS lock, a lock file, you can say, uh, lock. And if you talk about the blue uh, super block corruption, it could be the multiple safe containers are running against a single OST. That could corrupt the, the label block as well as the super block as well. So, but recently this has been fixed. We, we know there, is, there was one bug with the, uh, this corruption with the super block. Um, the BlueFS Eno space, so if the 
Blue Story is highly fragmented and uh, there is no space left to allocate uh, for the kind of like uh, Blue Star allocations uh, are failing. So it could be like because uh, it's like uh, Blue Star share alloc size is 64K and the OSTs has iteratively consumed all the uh, 64K larger blocks and and the allocation is failing because uh, the allocation is not aligned to the 64K. So you have to get uh, uh, the freedom from the blue store and see how the allocation is and which specific uh, kind of like the blocks are being used and where you have the any space for the, like any, any free uh, blocks from the specific allocation size, you can say 64K. So you can lower the Blue store share alloc size to 16 uh, k. It's but you need to analyze the free dump carefully, and uh, then apply that so that you can at least start the OST. And then once the things rather looks good from the PG perspective, all the PGs are active, then you can actually redeploy that OST. Um, so memory leak. I'll uh, briefly talk in the next slide. Uh, so as I said, like it could be the configuration issue or there is a real memory leak issue as well. Um, so we have not seen that much like high CPU consumption since Nautilus, but there is a possibility like because of some tunings uh, from the safe, uh, from the OST perspective. So for that, you need to use uh, uh, Perf, uh, Perf tool or even you can use the wall clock profiler uh, implemented by Mark Nelson. And even like there is a new tool like uh, uh, O-Profile, if you are aware of it. Uh, so, so this is like in general, like you see it like uh, the unresponsive and slow safe commands. So you, if you are, if you are seeing this in more often in the rook safe environment, then it might be related to the safe MDS. So the MGR volume plugins, which actually uh, handles these safe FS commands, right? So you might have some corruption, the file system corruption, the MDS corruption, you can say, it, or the MDS is not rather like healthy. So you might, so, uh, or there could be some other issues like some other modules, safe MGR modules also, uh, uh, kind of like uh, affecting these uh, overall like uh, issues, you can say. So the another module I can name it like it's a progress module as well. We have seen it in the past. Um, you might see like some uh, like the PGs are in unknown state. That's likely because the uh, MGR is down since long time, or uh, the OSTs are failing to send the uh, PG stats to the MGR to keep it updated. Uh, you will less likely see this MGR crash as well. Uh, you mostly like you'll see the the module crashes like uh, because of some bugs in the model, so MGR models. Yeah. So the memory leak issues, I would say. Uh, so apart from like monitoring tool like uh, some PS commands or using some dashboards, okay, so dashboard or using the Grafana as well, you can use this uh, Podman stars command as well to monitor the container issues. And if you really see, okay, this uh, this particular daemon uh, container is consuming a lot of memory, then you can track it down through the the uh, kind of like core dump or some additional like dump mempools and see where the whether it's really the daemon memory leak issues or not. Uh, if you talk about the with, with respect to OSTs, it might be because of the workload. But yeah, it's it you need more information to track it down to the, what it's, it's, if it's really the memory leak issue. Uh, the heap profile also helps, uh, uh, which actually gives you the TC malloc uh, profiles, like how the heap looks like when you see it like uh, from the, uh, how much is uh, the heap size for the specific safe demands as well. Uh, as I said, like dump pimples also helpful, you, need, you can, track it if for the OSTs, you can see it from the blue FS and blue store. But if it's MGR or MON, then you, you need to track it down from the other areas as well. Some like anonymous buffers, uh, like that you can say. 
so we often use the core dump as a additional uh, okay so i'll quickly wrap it up um, so so you can create a core dump when the memory consumption is at the highest level and then you can generate a core dump so in the container environment you don't have the uh, kind of like g core command because it needs a pid uh, namespace access for the containers so you can generate a core dump directly from the node and give the uh, like send a trap or abort signal to the OS, uh, safe daemon directly. So that will generate the core dump. Uh, and then you can analyze it using the core analyzer, which is another like a very good tool to analyze the, uh, the heap. And even use the string command to uh, investigate from the core dump. So this is one of the kind of like the GDB script. You can use it to get the uh, in-memory logs, safe logs, uh, if you don't have the safe logs available. Because uh, if you talk about the uh, rook safe, right, when the crashes, the, it, uh, the rook safe creates another pod container, uh, uh, OST pod. So you lose the earlier logs, and uh, you don't know what really happened. So you can still able to access it from the node, but you have to go through the uh, go to the ODF or other like the, the uh, storage node and then find it from the slash var log safe. But if you have the core dump, that also useful to get the, all the in-memory logs as well. So you just need to use this uh, script in the from the safe, uh, safe source code. Uh, in the it's inside the uh, script directory. So its name is like safe uh, dump log dot py. So you just need to uh, find the particular threads which has this, uh, uh, it's a particular frame, you can say, which has the access to this uh, 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 safe context, global safe context uh, object. So that has a log handle, log handle. So you just need to uh, run this uh, JDB script function uh, uh, to get the, all the in-memory logs. Um, so, so this is like the crashing or safe faulting safe demand. So if the safe OST is starting, but it's not able to boot it properly, and it's crashing before it's actually able to talk to the safe monitor, you can say. So here you can see actually when when I tried to start this OST 4, it crashed, but I don't have any much details here in the logs. Even the podman logs is not giving much details. So, but fortunately you have the core dump of that file. So, what I did to debug this issue is like just run this command uh, using the, uh, what I said, like safe ADM shell command and get uh, just uh, get access to that OSD uh, block device you can say. And they run this command directly on the, cont uh, inside the container to run that safe demand in the foreground, uh, command in the foreground mode you can say. Uh, but still it doesn't give what really went wrong. It did say from the call stack it's actually there is a PG metadata corruption, but it doesn't say which PG, uh, which PG is associated with. So, so from the core dump, you can actually find that one like uh, either through the logs, uh, in-memory logs, or you can go through the kind of like the GDB uh, debugging and find out which PG is associated with this one. And whether it's 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 because what what kind of issues it's facing like it's here it's basically like it's because of the epoch uh, corruption in the PG metadata for uh, PG uh, one dot ten the MCD is kind of like hex value you need to convert it to the kind of like the decimal uh, yeah to find it out like it's uh, one dot ten yeah that's all from my side uh, I'm happy to take questions. Thank you.